Hi, I'm Eddie O'Coin with Data Tech. Today we have Bob Worley from Utopic Software with us. Bob, thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me, Eddie. Bob's here to talk a little bit about the shadow repair self-healing system that Data Tech will be offering, powered by Persistent Suite. Bob, can you tell us a little bit about this new offering? Yeah, so uh, uh, shadow repair and the self-healing capability of shadow repair is really an innovative technology that um, you know we've been working with with Persistent Suite for the last 13 years. And so customers are going to have a better experience going forward. Um, essentially what um, shadow repair self-healing is going to enable the IT administration as well as the user community to do is to be able to uh, manage the machine on or off the network. So in case of a security threat or a misconfiguration or an unauthorized change to the system, uh, shadow repair self-healing is going to self-heal that system and bring that system back to that known good state. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like one of the things that makes shadow repair different is the proactivity as opposed to waiting for something to go wrong, going there and fixing it. Shadow repair kind of jumps into jumps into action by itself, doesn't it? Yeah, the, the old technologies or things that, um, you know, uh, the blue button, for instance, or uh, technologies that, that uh, tried to recover the system, they really did it um, with a, a healthy operating system. And as we all know, mm -hmm. uh, ransomware, security shield, PC optimizer, these types of attacks, these forms of malware, render the system useless. And essentially what happens is the operating system won't even boot in some cases, mm -hmm. or the user's locked out of their own system. So in the case of, of shadow repair, self-healing, the BIOS will load and then preboot the operating system will ensure that that operating system loads. Traditional software don't allow you to do um, that level of capability uh, preboot of the operating system. Now I bet that that cuts down on help desk calls quite a bit. You know the break fix maintenance days are over and organizations that um, continue with this approach will have you know four to five IT professionals per ten machines mm -hmm. and the break fix maintenance model is really not a profitable model for no I, uh, for data tech nor for the customers. Sure. Business interruption and business downtime is costing more every day we go by, every day that goes by. Mm -hmm. So when we look at the ability to self heal the system with shadow repair, the the customers are going to be taking on technology that's innovative, technology that's been around for 13 years, but have the capabilities uh, to uh, in, in near real time recover the system. Sure. Now, I just want to read you a quote from Kevin Kors. He's our chief technical officer here at Data Tech, and ask you to maybe expand on this a little bit. Sure. He says, shadow repair enables self-healing above and beyond a simple Windows system restore by, by allowing for multiple levels of repair with each level, offering additional layers of granularity. Could you expand on that a little bit? You know, it, it, it gets back to that competitive differentiator that uh, Data Tech shadow repair self-healing will have. The ability for a system preboot to the operating system to recover itself. The ability for a system on or off the network or not even logged into the domain for that matter to be able to recover that system from any kind of threat, any kind of file change, any kind of registry change, services change, process change. What shadow repair self-healing will enable you to do, it'll, make, it'll allow you to manage the state of that user's machine on or off the network. So I, I agree with uh, Kevin and I believe that uh, there's more to come with the technology as well. Sure. Well, a number of our clients here at Data Tech have to be concerned with government compliance, whether that be PCI, HIPAA. Now, does shadow repair help on that end? Does that help alleviate some of those concerns? Well, you know, a lot about compliance is how much money do you want to spend to minimize what level of risk? Mm -hmm. And so what we see in the industry from a banking, financial services, insurance, and government uh, perspective, as well as healthcare, if you think about high trust and the number of breaches that have occurred with um, social security numbers and credit cards being you know, put into the wild, what we see is the first thing you have to do is get back to the basic blocking and tackling of IT. And you have to manage to a set of standards. It's often easier said than done. When we look at in, uh, compliance in general, the key within compliance, whether it's PCI, Sarbanes-Oxley, HIPAA, high trust, if you will, it's the ability to manage the standards, but enforce those standards, whether the system's on or off the network. Mm -hmm. So having that ability to, again, with shadow repair 
self-healing, you'll be able to enforce those desired standards, those de desired configurations, whether the system's on or off the network. So that'll ensure compliance for that end user, also for the business. And what about reporting? Uh, reporting is a key aspect in, in compliance as well. And, and uh, from what I read, shadow repair does quite a bit on that end as well. So shadow repair self-healing enterprise reporting is very, very extensive. It's very granular. You can get to the point where you can, you can start tracking bit level, file level, um, changes in the organization. So you can actually look at a process, a registry, a service, or even a, a major file or application and actually detect exactly what changed on the system. The other scenario that you can do uh, relative to uh, enterprise reporting is you can demonstrate control of those systems. Mm -hmm. and You can demonstrate control at a, at a near real-time basis. So having the ability to use analytics to see exactly where those attacks are coming from and what files are actually changing is pretty powerful for an organization. Very, very useful. So Bob, where are the major industries where your customers are coming from? Come yeah. from, from uh, all over the spectrum or is there certain industries that you hone in on? You know, great question. I mean, as we look at um, IT spend, it's not as though IT spend is actually increasing. Uh, we're seeing a lot of, um, you know, do more with less. Mm -hmm. And uh, the industries that are really affected by that we see is, is state and local government, education, health care. So in those cases where the resources are very, you know, um, very limited, um, those resources need to kind of, again, do more with less. So having the self-healing capabilities of shadow repair are going to provide them the opportunity to focus on the business at hand as opposed to the break-fix maintenance of a PC. Sure. The other industries, such as insurance, financial services, um, and, and specialty type services, uh, banking, etc., those organizations have critical systems that need to always have that you know, 5.9 availability. So the 5.9 availability plays into this where the system, again, takes that self-healing approach to do corrective action. And that corrective action could be a, a, as, as simple as, um, hey, we have to recover this system because it's a stock trade. And that stock trade has to clear our systems before we can actually execute that trade. So it, it really, it really is, is broad in terms of the industry coverage. We have uh, customers in almost all verticals. Uh, around the globe, and I think when you look at the the capabilities, it's more of a functional capability. Um, any 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 organization that has remote users, laptop users, um, mobile devices such as tablets, um, those um, folks that, again that don't have the uh, vast IT resources to be able to do that corrective action, uh, especially if the system's disconnected from the domain. Well, why don't I jump right into the live demonstration and show you the real capabilities of our innovative shadow repair uh, technology. Well, that'd be great. So the first thing I'll do for the audience is demonstrate this. Is, this is a live demonstration. So Adobe works. My different accessories work like calculator. So this is a functioning PC. I have Office installed here so Word is actually up and running. I can actually uh, open up PowerPoint. So all of my day-to-day -day business applications are actually up and running. And so now what I'll do is I'll, I'll demonstrate uh, a catastrophic failure using uh, the capabilities of, of, you know, the many different uh, security threats that we have out there. And, and this is just one form of that security threat. Can you... Uh... So as I mentioned, uh, Eddie, what we'll do is we'll, we'll infect the system with Security Shield, which is a form of malware. Mm -hmm. So essentially what Security Shield is doing is the user is, is taking matters into their own hand. They've, they've actually looked at their machine and they've, they've actually gone through the scenario that their applications are actually loading very slow. Well, the performance of their system is actually uh, performing uh, below their, their normal standards. So they believe that there's some, some level of challenges in the system. So if the users have administrative credentials, then they can, in fact, um, download these kinds of uh, wonderful toys. If they don't have admin credentials, Security Shield is one of those uh, forms of malware that actually the user, all the, all the user has to do is click on um, a, an attachment or click on an email um, that might infect their system. Or if they're surfing the web, just putting their, their uh, mouse over an icon could actually infect the system. I as think well. a lot of people don't realize how easy it is to 
to have your system infected. I mean, we're wide open, right? I mean, at the end of the day, um, as you as you mentioned earlier, 45 percent um, protection with antivirus software. So malware and, and, and these stuff. and these form of attacks are are, are very very important to uh, defend against. So what we'll do is we'll just uh, kind of simulate this attack, and as you're going to see here really fast, is you're going to see catastrophic errors that are going to occur for that particular user. And so the system is, is essentially being infected. The user actually is saying to themselves, I have that aha moment. So now they're saying, hey, my system is going to perform so rapidly and, and, and with high performance that you know, this is going to be like the first day that I actually um, downloaded certain business applications and I'm going to perform my daily routines. So the first thing they'll do is, um, you know, maybe they're going to calculate, uh, um, you know, a formula. Oh, geez, uh, you know, calculator doesn't work. So the accessories are starting to have uh, experience issues on the system. I can't even open up my PDF. So I'm, I'm experiencing some application-related uh, failures. Well, let's look at uh, Word, and as you can see, I can't even operate the Word functionality. What about PowerPoint? I need to work on my PowerPoint. So as you can see, uh, Eddie, none of the applications or accessories are actually responding. So the next thing that occurs is the user will try to log into the network and actually open up a trouble ticket. And as you can see here, the page is under attack, and this warning is now coming, uh, coming up in front of the user's experience. So from that perspective, the user has to now pick up the telephone and actually call the help desk. And typically, what happens is the user is saying, hey, look, I didn't do anything to the network. I didn't do anything to the computer. All I, all I did is I tried to um, address some of the performance issues of my machine. Mm -hmm. And so with shadow repair, all we have to do, Eddie, is we have to restart the computer. And again, whether I'm on or off the network, I could be 30,000 feet in a plane, and the system will actually recover itself without any manual intervention. So the user, all the user has to do is actually hit an F9 key or one of the function keys or just power down the machine. Now, without shadow, shadow repair installed, what would be the steps a user would have to take otherwise? So getting back to the telephone conversation, what would happen is the user would be on the phone, and from there the user would, would have to um, step by step allow the uh, technician to remote into the box to be able to look at what files have actually changed. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you're aware that um, at least 100, 100 to 200 files are typically impacted with any form of malware. So in that case, the user is going to be dead in the water, and the, and the actual technician is going to have to re-image their machine. And we all know how exciting re-imaging machines is. And we're looking at substantial downtime. The, yeah. en the enemy of any organization that's trying to make money. That's right. Downtime is, is the killer, and especially when the user is going to have to receive a new PC, the user is going to lose all of their profiles, they're going to lose all of their settings, the machine is going to be brought back to a day zero state as opposed to with shadow repair, the system is going to be brought back to the last known state. So as you're seeing here, well, we're telling the user and we're telling IT some statistics, some log information of all the files that were impacted with that breach. And so this is a very good analytical tool to show the organization that this type of bad behavior or this type of attack on the system can be devastating. It's almost like it can be used as a teaching tool as well for end users. It, it can. Know, this is what you did wrong. This is how you, how you put your system at risk. Yeah, the training capabilities are endless for the end users. And, and you know, security assurance folks and, and information security uh, professionals have the ability to kind of educate the users on what not to do. So it's almost as though the phishing attacks that we see today, uh, being able to do um, uh, phishing awareness or, or user awareness training based on what not to do and, and what to do mm -hmm. on a daily basis. So now I'll just log into my computer. And again, you saw the repair happen pre-boot of the operating system. So essentially, the BIOS loads and then um, shadow repair would load uh, powered by persistent suite. And there's many different levels of repair, Eddie. So you can have high, medium, and low. And again, this is a bit level or file level repair. So you can actually categorize or identify a la carte wise what you want to repair on that system. Mm -hmm. So now what I'll do is I'll... Um, I'll demonstrate that this is a functioning system, which you probably already aware that Shadow Repair did self-heal the system. So now my calculator works. Uh, Adobe will work. And all my functions of Office will work. So I can actually uh, open up my Word documents, and I can conduct business the way I would normally do. 
So basically, you infected your computer with a, with a pretty dangerous form of malware, and how long did it take start to finish to repair it? You know, I, I didn't have a uh, stopwatch on me, but probably 35 to 45 seconds, the machine was back to that last known good state. And without without shadow repair installed, what do you uh, think we're looking at? Like we talked about, all kinds of downtime. Yeah, we're talking about shipping new machines to that user. We're talking about uh, maybe two to three hours of uh, getting that user back to the last known state, making sure that all the patches are uh, up to date, making sure that uh, the system's actually checking in uh, with the remote uh, as a remote employee. Um, and in this case, you know, the user's back to surfing the web. And let's just hope, Eddie, that they don't actually make the same mistake and click on something that's, uh, that's security related. So back to your point about educating the user and actually providing awareness, that's, that's, a, good, um, that's a good report for the users uh, or the technicians to actually share with the users is that, um, that log report to be able to show them here are the things that were impacted. Please don't do that again. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's amazing. In a matter of about 35 to 45 seconds, we just eliminated how many headaches, how much downtime. Yep, it's the power of the innovative solution. And I think that, you know, with 12 years under our belt, 13 years under our belt now, uh, we've seen a dramatic reduction in cost uh, from, from an IT perspective, as well as those repeat cases now go away. That is something. Well, Data Tech is very excited to offer this to customers for sure. And I know our customers are going to be very, uh, very excited too. Great. Bob, thank you so much for, thank you, Eddie, for showing us how it worked. We really appreciate it. Thanks, Sounds Bob. Great.